brace yourself people because this is going to be a very long episode of learning with Mick and Alan okay um, so today we are going to have a look as promised at the consonants this is going to be the final episode of this season which was dedicated to uh, pronunciation uh, and uh, I have made uh, 24 pages of these so uh, I hope you have uh, something to note uh, there will be uh, lots of things to uh, see today and uh, let's get started some of the letters are going to be easy and uh, some of them are going to be uh, a bit more challenging all right, we're going to start with B. Oh, I'm going to take the sheets one by one. It would be simpler. We're going to start with B. Uh, B is very simple. B is always pronounced. Uh, it's pronounced B. Uh, so, see, toujours. Toujours means always. And uh, prononcé, uh, pronounced. So, toujours prononcé. B. Toujours prononcé. Every time you see a B in the word, you have to say it. Now, C. Oh, there it is. C. And you see, uh, C has uh, a few uh, variants. Uh, normally, uh, C uh, is pronounced K. Uh, but just like in English, if C is followed by U or E, it becomes S. But I selected a few words uh, for you to uh, understand what I'm talking about. Uh, for example, here is la glace. Glace. La glace means the eyes. La glace. glace. We don't say la glac, we say la glace. But here, c. C. C here is uh, pronounced c. for le cuir. Le cuir means leather. Le cuir. Uh, two more words. This also pronounced as s. La ceinture. La ceinture is the belt uh, that you put uh, on your trouser. La ceinture. And there's a word where c is pronounced que. La carotte. La carotte. It's a carrot, uh, obviously. Uh, let's say this word one more time. La glace. La glace. Le cuir, le cuir, la ceinture, la ceinture, la carotte, la carotte. Ok. Uh, C has a variant, uh, two variants actually, but uh, one that we're going to uh, see uh, most. Uh, with more details CH CH uh, it's just like SH in English it's pronounced sh. Uh, see the first word here la chance you can see also the C at the end of chance is pronounced s because it is followed by the uh. la chance means the chance but it also means luck then you also have <laughs> le chef, le chef, like in the in the kitchen, le chef. It also means the boss. A little verb here, uh, which can be challenging for some of you. Chercher, chercher, chercher means to look for or to search. Chercher, and uh, if you like singing, maybe. You're interested with this word, la chanson, la chanson means the song. Uh, find the other, uh, yeah, where is it? Sometimes I throw my pieces of paper and of course they are <laughs> quite far away after. Uh, but uh, very rarely you may find uh, this a strange variant of C. Uh, <laughs> strange variant of C here. It's called CCD. 
and it's always pronounced uh, s as well. So if you find it, then remember you have to pronounce it s. But it, it's quite rare, so we don't need to uh, spend too much time on it. D'accord means uh, all right. <laughs> Alan likes to say d'accord. D. D is pronounced d, and is always pronounced except uh, at the end uh, of a word. Uh, have uh, a few uh, examples here, uh, such as dormir. It's a verb that means to sleep. Dormir. And here it shows an adjective, chaud, uh, means hot. You see, the D is not pronounced. But that's in the masculine version. In the feminine version, it becomes chaud. And here, chaud, because D is no longer the end of the word, it's the E here. Then the D is pronounced. Chaud. Chaud. Uh, a few more words, like uh, devoir. Uh, it's a verb, it means to owe. If you owe something to somebody, then you use the verb devoir. <laughs> Devoir or devant. Devant, the adverb devant means uh, forward. All right. You can always uh, move back and uh, rework uh, the verbs. Uh, just I have to move forward because this is going to be a long lesson today. F. That's quite simple. F is toujours prononcé, always pronounced. F and is pronounced f, uh, just like in almost every other languages. F. The next one, G. G. So the same rule uh, that applies to C applies to G. If G is followed by a E or a E, uh, it is pronounced J. But if it is followed by any other letter, it is pronounced G. Uh, for example, here, la guitare. And notice that the U after the G is silent, so that we can have immediately the sound G uh, without uh, being stuck uh, with nothing between the G and the E. Like this, it's not la guitare, it's la guitare, thanks to the silent U. La guitare. It's a guitar, <laughs> obviously. Uh, we saw like glass uh, earlier, so you should know this. Yeah. What about manger? Manger. Yeah. Manger means to eat. And you can see here the G becomes J because it's followed by a E. Manger. Like you can do manger la glace to eat the ice cream. Glass? Oui, glace, tu connais, he likes uh, ice cream. Glass? Oui, glass or grand or grand you can see uh, just like before yes. remember day here is not pronounced but here it is grand grand means big or large Let's see these words one more time la guitare la guitare la glace la glace Manger. Du feu. Manger. Bouché. Oui. Bouché. Grand. Gag. Grand. Gag. Grande. Grand. Grande. Ok. This is it for G. Uh, next, uh, we're going to see H. H. So we saw toujours. Remember, toujours means always. Well, here it's jamais prononcé. Jamais means never. In French language, you never pronounce H. H is a word, is a letter which is always silent. Like le haricot. You see, the H is silent, the T as well. Uh, that's the way it is at the end of the word. Le haricot means the bean. Like a red bean, a French bean, the uh, haricot. Or, unfortunately, maybe one day you would have to go to this place, l'hôpital. 
l'hôpital. See, we move directly from the L to the O accent circonflexe. L'hôpital. And yes, before, people were saying hospital, but now we say hôpital. L'hôpital. Should we say again, le haricot? Le haricot? L'hôpital. Never pronounce H. So, l'hôpital, it's not French, all right? Uh, then, two easy ones. J et K. J is pronounced J and it's always pronounced, toujours prononcé. Uh, same for K, uh, which is pronounced K. Both of these letters, J and K, are always pronounced, toujours prononcé. L. L. L is pronounced L, like in most languages, and it is always pronounced, except on rare occasion. Uh, maybe if you go to France, you will see this uh, car manufacturer, Renault. Uh, so for some reason, the L and the T as well are not pronounced, but it's very rare. Usually you always pronounce uh, L. D'accord? Non, Alan, c'est dangereux ici. Viens plutôt là. Next one, M. M, just like the previous letters, are always pronounced. M, and it sounds uh, M. Easy. Then is N. Uh, N is also always da, pronounced. Uh, da, N, <laughs> N is uh, pronounced N. And uh, the only times where you should not say N is uh, when you find N within a variant, uh, like one of the variants we saw before with the vowels. Next one is P. P uh, is never pronounced at the end of a word, such as the adverb here, trop. You see, the P at the end of trop is not pronounced. You don't say trop, you say trop. It means too much, uh, trop, or just too, trop. Uh, otherwise, um, in other, every other cases, P is pronounced P, like uh, Papa, for example. Uh, working with kids. <laughs> um, otherwise, there's a variant. P plus H is pronounced F, uh, like in English, for example. Uh, these usually are words of uh, Greek origins. Uh, and, a word which might be convenient to know. Uh, it's exactly the same as in English. La pharmacie. La pharmacie. See, it's the pharmacy. La pharmacie. That's also uh, quite easy. The next one is a bit more difficult. The letter Q. Uh, the letter Q. Ah, oh. Ooh, la, 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 oui. la, the letter Q uh, is almost always used at the end of a word, such as le coq, which means the rooster. And it doesn't mean what it means in English as well, occasionally, in case you wanted to know. Le rooster, the, the rooster, le coq. Or the adjective, uh, it's a numeric adjective, cinq. Sank means five. Sank. Um, there's one exception, uh, but maybe it's because it's a foreign word. Uh, this is the only case I know in which Q is uh, independent from uh, the letter U uh, when it is not at the end of a word uh, for the country Qatar. Um, otherwise, Q uh, is always found at the end of a word if it is not accompanied by U. This is the variant of U. Uh, uh, you will find... No, no, Alan. Regarde. <laughs> oh, oh la la. Oh. You will find this. <laughs> you will find this variant of, uh, of uh, Q quite often. And remember, the U in QU is also silent. So you never said Q or you always said K. 
Uh, for example, the pronoun quel, 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 both of them have the same pronunciation. It means which, uh, quel. Or this is a word which means shell, like a, a seashell or the shell of a snail. La coquille. You see, I don't say la coquille, I say la coquille. Coquille. Coquille, oui, très bien. Coquille. You see, it's easy. Even a, even a one-year-old boy can say it, so you can do it too. La coquille. Coquille. Oui. Coquille. Coquille. Oh, c'est très bien, oui. I'm very, I'm very proud of it. C'est moi, vous allez tous. Ah. R. R is pronounced R. R. <laughs> I know that this is going to be maybe one of the most difficult uh, thing to learn for you in French language. R pronounced R. Uh, let's see uh, this. Uh, let's see uh, this word that we saw in one of the previous lessons. Le fruit. You see, it's, you have to pronounce R. Le fruit. The fruit. Uh, we saw five earlier. How about we see three? Trois. Trois means three. Another word. Next is four. Quatre. Trois. Quatre. So now, if you have noted, if you have taken notes, you should say, you should be able to count up to five in French. Un, une, or deux, trois, quatre, and cinq that we saw earlier. We should, we will see the, the numbers uh, gradually. There's a verb also that I want you to know. Uh, chercher. You can see here that the air is pronounced, but not here, because remember, er at the end of the word, which is not a monosyllabic word, is pronounced e and not er. Chercher. Oui. Oui, c'est très bien. Let's say these words one more time. No, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's say these words one more time. Le fruit. Le fruit. Trois. Trois. Quatre. 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 Chercher. 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 Très bien. Very good. Très, très. Very. So, très bien means very good. See, it's, uh, it's very important to say R. R. The R is also one of the most used uh, consonants in French language, so very important you know how to pronounce R. And again, uh, when you practice, don't hesitate to uh, exaggerate. Uh, French people would appreciate more if you exaggerate uh, the R uh, because they would think that you make effort and they really like it when uh, people make effort speaking French. Um, now here are a few more words with uh, air, uh, but this time they are monosyllabic words. Uh, so because they are monosyllabic words, just one syllable, then the air is pronounced at the end, uh, like the adjective cher, cher. Uh, in masculine and share in feminine uh, it means expensive but it also means dear for example if you want to uh, write a dear friend on the when you write a letter uh, dear friend or dear sir dear madame you would write share as well share la mer which we might have seen earlier when we saw uh, the variants of e la mer means the sea uh, la mer and there's a new word, uh, exclusive to uh, learning with Mick on YouTube. Par. Par. Uh, is an adverb which means by. Uh, for example, uh, 
if you read the story and uh, you want to know who is the author, so it was written by something, it's uh, par. Cher, mère, par. And uh, no, I am also not going to teach you the world famous bad word with the uh, air something. You have to figure it out by yourselves. S. S is pronounced s, but sometimes pronounced z. Uh, it depends on the configuration of the word. So when S is not surrounded by vowels, it is pronounced s. Otherwise, it is pronounced z. For example, la saucisse. La saucisse means the sausage. You see here, S is not surrounded by vowels. You have one here, but here you have nothing because the beginning of the word. So, pronounce S. But here, they, we had to put two S's. Uh, otherwise, it would sound la saucisse. And uh, saucisse doesn't exist in French. It doesn't mean anything. So, uh, to make it sound S. We put two S, la saucisse. Um, and I made a spelling mistake at the next one. That's not acceptable. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's quite easy to uh, write in a phonetic way and make mistakes in French too, even if you're a native speaker. Oh, dear, 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 dear. dear. Okay, there. Next one. Le magasin. Le magasin with an S here. And you can see you have an E and an A. So the S is surrounded by vowels. Therefore, it sounds like Z. Le magasin. And remember with S, very, very important. S is never pronounced at the end of words. Never, never, never. Except a few words of foreign origins, usually Latin, like uh, le bus, which means the bus. Uh, but it's very, very, very. 99 of 9% of French words which finish with S have the S not pronounced. Keep this in mind. T. T has a variant, T-I. Uh, so T is uh, just like S, never pronounced at the end of the word. Uh, very, very rare when it is pronounced, like a but, uh, which means goal. But apart from that, it, not, I say 99.9% of uh, T at the end of the words are not pronounced. They are usually here as an indicator for plural forms or feminine forms uh, but otherwise they are not pronounced uh, such as in le mot mot is a means word le mot uh, an adjective here for for gives us the opportunity to practice the air that we saw before le for for means strong uh, but that's for masculine and feminine. It is fort. Fort. And here the T is pronounced because the last word, last letter is a U, which itself is not pronounced. Uh, for. Fort. For. Fort. And I chose a sweet word uh, to finish with. Le dessert. Le dessert. Le dessert is the dessert at the end of the meal. Like a cake, for example, is a dessert. The variant of T, T I. Uh, T I is uh, followed by uh, a vowel at the end of the word, and it is pronounced S. Uh, for example, uh, l'action. 
l'action. So you pronounce action, l'action, or l'audition. Action, audition. In English, that would be pronounced uh, sheer, but in French, it's s. L'action, l'audition. Uh, you could also say attention, uh, for example, attention, attention, attention. Uh, usually, most uh, English words which finish by chien uh, are exactly the same in French, except that they finish by sion. See, you know a lot of French words, actually. Ah, we are at the end. V. V is toujours prononcé. Always pronounced. Ah, then is a double V. In English, it's a double U, double U. But in French, it would be in a double V. It's double V. Uh, well, it kind of looks like a double V, right? Uh, sometimes pronounce V, sometimes pronounce wa, we or we. Uh, but the W is not uh, a French letter. It was actually implemented quite late uh, in the French uh, alphabet, uh, and late of the in you know second part of the 19th century. Before uh, they would use uh, this kind of spelling. Sometimes you can see these kind of spellings in some uh, French cities, especially in Normandy. Um, like there's this D-Day beach uh, uh, located in Wistreham. Uh, they don't use a W, they use this type of spelling. Um, uh, so, for example, le wagon, the wagon, le wagon, uh, is one of the rare cases where W is pronounced V. Uh, but otherwise, it's almost pronounced W, something like uh, le whisky. The whiskey. It's, you, you are not going to encounter double V very often in French. To finish with, X. Uh, X is always pronounced X. Uh, and the only case where you don't have to pronounce X is uh, uh, when it uh, indicates the plural. Uh, but most of the case it's uh, e -u plus x at the end you don't need to pronounce it and uh, same with the z z is pronounced z uh, but be careful when you find a z at the end of the word it is pronounced e. that's all you need to know about the consonants okay well 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 it's very important for you to learn uh, the pronunciation of French letters first because now we are really going to uh, deal with more serious matters such as verbs, grammatics, how to build a sentence this is what we're going to see in season two uh, I know some teachers don't really focus on the, uh, on the pronunciation and hope that their students catch the pronunciation as they get more experience I, I see French more like a like painting, you know, and if you it's important for me to give you all the different colors uh, so that you can use French uh, uh, like painting. Uh, if you have all the pronunciation, then it would be easier for you to uh, to uh, build up your French skills. Wow, difficult, right? Uh, so, you're going to have a lot of work to do. Don't hesitate to uh, review the previous videos and uh, I'll see you for the next season of Learning with Mick and Alan. Dis bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. No. <laughs> bon, non. <laughs> bye.